Hi, my name's John Cordy and what can only be described as a cynical attempt to monetize everything, I'd like to announce my new uh, car bumper stickers which uh, say the car in front is a legato lick that you must learn uh, and I've got another sticker that says the car in front is the best legato lick you'll ever hear. Um, you can get them in the, in the description. You can, obviously. Today's Friday and that means chords. Um, and I was asked to look at Eric Johnson's Trail of Tears intro from uh, Austin City Limits, 1988, a year before I was born. Not one of my favourite songs of his, but it's got a cool intro that he plays live. Um, and if you remember or you haven't seen yet, I've done um, kind of a deep dive into some of Eric Johnson's intros because I think these are largely, I think, improvised um, and end up being different from kind of gig to gig and you can kind of look at some of the common traits and kind of habits that Eric has. And in this particular intro, there's two things which I think stick out most of all. So it's the use of spread triads and then also his use of, uh, I guess you'd call them harped harmonics or uh, I'm not exactly sure what the terminology is, but basically it's a thing that Eric Johnson's quite well known for, but there's other guitarists that have done it as well. Tommy Emmanuel, probably early days, Chet Atkins, people like this, but basically doing this kind of thing. Uh, let me see if I can do it. So it's kind of difficult to decipher what's going on with those until you get a bit familiar with um, the sound. Um, so what I'm going to do is just talk you through the intro and play the it kind of bit by bit and then at the end we'll talk about the mechanics of playing that kind of thing I think. So the song starts um, with, um, worth saying all of this will be tabbed out for my Patreons, um, thank you for the support. So the, the song starts and Eric goes and looks at his drummer and um, basically starts a rhythm going and um, this is his first chord shape so it's really kind of tricky but if you imagine it like uh, so that's what it would look like or sound like so we think about it maybe as like an A add 6 add 9 and also you're adding a D so an 11 so A, a D, F sharp B, an E and an A, but we're playing that uh, way up here and what we're going to be doing is that harmonics thing that I was just talking about, so we've got kind of a small window of uh, error here. I'm going to start off with a harmonic on the G string, then pluck the E string, then D string, harmonic, pluck B string harmonic on the A string, G string pluck, and this is, I find it really tricky, make sure you're sounding all the notes with your left hand out properly, and then work on trying to get that mechanic down. being slow obviously. So that's the very first thing, he does that twice and then pluck a 12 string harmonic on the A string and then that kind of figure. So a B, an F sharp, a G and a D, an A and an E and a E and a B. And then we're going to have another harmonic thing. So uh, let me just talk you through this properly. So we've got an A, a D, uh, an F sharp, uh, a C sharp, then an E and an A. Those are the notes that we want. So then what we're going to do for this part is we're approaching with the 
E in the T string and then we're gonna do it like this so A uh, so this E string 12 frets above playing an A and then we're gonna have the E string with the harmonic and the G string just open so So slowly it should sound like something like this. So again, plucking the E in the D string before we get to the harmonic, then moving. So harmonic E string, pluck G string, harmonic A string, pluck B string, harmonic D string, pluck E string, and then the harmonic on the G string. And I'm finding that one quite hard. Um, my Pinky is doing weird things occasionally. Okay, and then we move to this part. So, starting with a G spread triad, then an A, and then we'll, for this next note, we just move up to a D from the C sharp. So G, A, A sus, then an D in first inversion, and then a G again, and then a B sus. Um, so I think. I think that's what he does, so a B, sus, and then stick that F sharp in the top, and then come down to G, add 9, and then he taps on at, at the 11th fret on the G string, and you pull off and bend at the same time. Sort of like a koto kind of sound. Koto? Koto, yeah. So, and then uh, D major 7 in second inversion. So, an A, F sharp, uh, C sharp, and D. Then, after this, um, we go back to these kind of chords. So, an A and E. And then a B and F sharp, G, and then sort of an A in third inversion, second inversion, sorry. So a C sharp, a B, an E, an A, I think. And then uh, a B minor spread triad in first inversion, so a D, a B, an F sharp. then this harmonic idea. So like a G, a D and an A. And then uh, the construction for this next harmonic um, um, I think you've got an A, a D, an F sharp, a B, an E and an A and then we're going to be plucking the E string so harmonic on the E string pluck the G string, harmonic on the A string 
uh, pluck the B string, harmonic on the uh, D string, pluck the E string and then finish with a harmonic on the G string. And then he's doing some rhythmic stuff with these notes. Uh, so we've got an F sharp, an A, a B, and then an open E. And then what he's doing in between those bits, he plays this chord. So a F sharp, a D, E, a B, a C sharp, and an F sharp and then back to that kind of rhythmic thing again and then the last thing that I'll show you that I think is pretty cool is this uh, G and D so that same idea but he's doing it with open strings instead so a G, a D and then an A and E I think it's what he ends up playing so something like that so Either that, so as I said, all of that will be tapped out for my Patreon people. Um, and let's just talk again about what's going on with this harped harmonic stuff, uh, if that's what we're calling them. So first thing to kind of really prioritise is making sure you've got the grip ringing out soundly because um, without that it won't be clear whether it's your right hand causing the issue or the left hand. So, so the way to sort of get into this stuff I guess would be to start off just by experimenting with your touch with this right hand to see if you can sound out these kind of harmonics that are happening 12 frets above so um, if you were playing an A with your D string just imagine where 12 frets above would be and try and you've got basically a, a light touch with your pointer finger on the 12th fret so actually on the fret By no means an expert at this, but this is what I'd practice if I wanted to really improve at this kind of thing. Um, so it's also important to kind of try and keep in mind exactly where these things are because there's obviously not a fret marker beyond sort of 21, 22 frets. So it's kind of difficult to visualize. Um, so you might want to try and take like a, a mental image. And the higher you get up, the, the smaller your kind of window for success is. Um, and you'll want to use your bridge pickup, that's just a general... Use your bridge pickup because if you're imagining where the string is actually resonating it's mostly past wherever your um, pointer finger actually is. So that's why it's going to sound better through your bridge pickup. Um,
guide practice kind of trying to make these things ring out um, keeping this left hand relaxed but also solid enough that you're actually making the connection to make those really ring out um, so as I say pointing to the 12th fret above where wherever your left hand is um, and trying to keep things kind of clean and relaxed so that you're not picking loads of random strings and it's something that doesn't really work too well if you really try and force it so try and stay relaxed try and be patient with it um. Um, it's something that doesn't come very naturally to me at all, but that's what I would practice. So hopefully this was vaguely useful. There's a buy me a coffee link, just in case you got something out of this. But only use that if you can really afford to, and if you really got something out of this lesson. Um, please do feel free to leave in the comments other um, stuff you want me to break down chord-wise. I think next week I might do some Alan Holdsworth just because there's a tune that I've got in mind that might show us some really cool, pretty chords. Um, but let me know if that's of interest, and I'll catch you for another video soon. Cheers.